Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, it's Megan, and today I am bringing you what I promised last week with my top 10 books of 2020, except these are the top 10 runner-ups. I read over 150 books in 2020, so of course it was hard to narrow down, so I wanted to give you my next top 10, or the top 10 that would have made it if the top 10 weren't there. You get the gist. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Coming in at the runner-up number 10, we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is a beautifully written, detailed, uh, lyrical novel about a boy who is a college student and one day when he is at the library, he comes across a book that has no author, no publisher, no ties to it. It doesn't even have a title. But when he is reading the book, he discovers that one of the short stories is actually something he experienced. And it's not like a, oh, I can relate to that. It's like down to the last detail, his story. And now he's on the mission to uncover how this person knew his story, how they discovered this, that kind of thing. And he uncovers a hidden labyrinth library underground or like in another realm. I don't even know how it works, but it was so beautifully written and just spoke to my soul. I was honestly speechless. I don't know how to express how much I loved this book. It's definitely not for everyone. It gets a little bit confusing, but it's gorgeous if you can get into the prose. Number nine is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is actually the Illumicrate edition for any of those of you who are wondering. Uh, but this tells the story, very simply, of an angel and a demon who fell in love. That's all I knew going into it, so that I'm going to keep it pretty uh, similar for the synopsis for you guys, in case you haven't read it, because just going into it with that knowledge was more than enough, and if it entices you, then it's perfect, because it has the same type of lyrical writing as her other work, which is Strange the Dreamer, so if you liked that, you'll probably like this. This has a little bit more like action-y kind of things, but yes. Number seven is The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. This is a somewhat gender bent retelling of King Arthur, but more so it's the perspective of Guinevere, which is super interesting. But the twist is that the Guinevere we're following is not the actual Guinevere. She's standing in because the actual Guinevere is no longer able to fulfill her duties for a certain reason so we are following our main character and the magic system in this is really cool the romance is beautifully written and I'm very excited to read the Camelot Betrayal which is the sequel number six is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas which is a very realistic and powerful novel about a girl named Star who is with her friend and one day they're pulled over by a cop and the cop gets nervous and assumes the wrong thing about her friend and shoots him right in front of Star. Star then goes into a sort of trial by media, I guess you could say, and is under the spotlight because she saw it all happen and there's a lot of opposing sides and it's, a l it's very in tune with what was happening back in June of 2020 and I cannot recommend this enough. I think every single school, every single classroom, every single teenager should read this book. Number five is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. This is a novel about a witch and a witch hunter, and they are arranged in a arranged marriage and now have to live together and be in a marriage and it's so beautifully written. It's enemies to lovers. I will say it's pretty slow in the first half of the novel, but the entire second half was so fun. The pacing was wonderful. The plot twists were intense and it was so worth the read. Number five is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Cemetery Boys is the story of Yadriel, whose family is not very accepting of his gender he just wants to be a brujo, but his family is denying him that wish. So in order to prove himself, he goes on the hunt for uh, his cousin Miguel, who has recently passed, and he is planning to help him pass over to the afterlife. Um, but 
in the attempt to find Miguel, he accidentally ends up raising Julian, who is a very popular boy from his high school from the dead, who they didn't realize was dead. So now it's like a double murder mystery slash uh, coming of age novel and it is beautiful. Um, definitely a really great read around like the spooky season. So yes, <laughs> I noticed that I end every review with so yes, but yeah. Number four is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This does a story of two authors, one who is a literary fiction author and one who is a woman's romance author. And they are both in a writing slump within their own genres for different reasons. There's a lot going on in their lives. And they end up meeting up and discovering that they're both in a writing slump. So they challenge each other to write in the other's genre of choice. And to do this, they go on like fake dates and historical like field trips and research trips and it's so fun. One of my favorite romances and it really made me get into the romance genre more. So I can't wait to read more from Emily Henry in the future. Number three was The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. This is a story of caste systems and our lowest caste is the crows. They are in charge of disposing of the dead bodies of this world and they actually have what is very unique and they have teeth magic or bone magic specifically but they use it specifically with teeth because uh, teeth are the most powerful for some reason. And we are following Phi who is a crow in this caste system and one day they are to dispose of the body of the prince and his bodyguard only to uncover a huge plot to take down the kingdom from the inside out and it's so fun. It was a little bit hard to get into at first but the characters had me in the end. Number two is Shatter the Sky by Rebecca Kim Wells in which we are following Marin, who is part of this clan in the mountain and every year the like oracles I think come by and take one maiden back to the like empire. This year they have chosen Marin's girlfriend so Marin goes on the quest to rescue her girlfriend, ends up stealing a dragon in the process and learns quite a bit about herself and her uh, abilities along the way. Also did I mention dragons? dragons. And last but not least was Wonder Woman by Lee Bardugo. I absolutely fell in love with Wonder Woman this past year. I read two graphic novels. I read Wonder Woman, the Warbringer novel. I bought a ton of like middle grade novels about Wonder Woman. I bought, um, I asked Anthony to get me the Wonder Woman DVD for Christmas and I got a little Funko. I'm absolutely in love and I can't wait to continue obsessing about Wonder Woman because she's now one of my favorite superheroes of all time. <laughs> Those were my top 10 runner ups. So let me know in the comments down below which books were top of the list but didn't quite make it to your top 10 this year. I'd love to chat about them and any good book recommendations you have. But that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for my top 10 sequels coming up next. And I'll see you then. Bye, friends. Thank you.